I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, it's good to be back. Amen. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to continue the series, The Lord's Way of Doing Things. I think you can remember. Uh, I took the Bible verse, Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 to 33, if you read it, one scripture says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek. Seek. Uh, so when, now the thing is, uh, as I shared earlier, we can do our own way. We can do God's way, we can do sometimes uh, the world's way. That's our, our choice. God will never force anybody. Satan will. But God will never force anybody to do anything. But he, he has created us as a free moral agent. So it's a choice, our choice. Succeeding, whether you like it or not, it's our choice. Right? So you can give up. Or you can continue. <laughs> That's our choice. Now, last uh, few weeks, I was determined to come, determined to come. But the only thing, my physical body didn't uh, have enough strength to uh, come in. But today, uh, actually, to come today, I made a stubborn, stern decision. No, I'm going. Right? And uh, so after a long time, uh, really today morning I preach, uh, so long, uh, uh, length away, I never got a, I mean, I had plenty of opportunity, but I was weak. I couldn't do it. Right? But, by the grace of God, we will be able to do everything. Only thing, whatever we do, are we doing it in God's way, or are we doing it our own, own way? If we want God's result in our life, we have to do everything according to God's way. Quick question. How long are you going to serve the Lord? Hmm? How long can you serve, serve the Lord? Simple question. It's our choice. One time I can remember for some work I went to Korean church and uh, so the pastor there uh, asked me, Pastor, if you don't mind, uh, I have a question every time when I look at you. I said, yes. What is the question? Here? Then uh, he said, uh, he asked me, how old are you, Pastor? I think that time I was 65 or 66 or something like that. And uh, so you're, uh, this is a retiring, retiring, uh, retiring age. Uh, you're still pastoring the church? I said, yes. For me, no retirement. <laughs> my, God is, my God doesn't want me to retire. Our oh, God is not a real. He never planned for anything. Retiring. That's man's plan. Man's idea. Right? Especially when it comes to the kingdom of God, you want to stay. Carnal mind will say, go. Give up. But spiritual mind always, always lead you to victory and also never give up. 
Never give up. Right? The physical body might say, our carnal mind might say, which we, are, which, uh, we have freedom to choose whether you want to do it or not. But only a simple statement. If you want God's result in your life, then stick to God's way of doing things. Amen. Yeah, sometimes people used to ask me. Now, uh, even this morning I was sharing. Then I'm uh, not one or two. Many times in the meetings, God has uh, spoken to me, shows me things. Uh, for some people, sometimes, especially young people, I have particularly told them. God is going to prosper you. You will be a wealthy person in your family or something like that. And uh, just because I gave a prophecy, it doesn't automatically come. Right? You have to really uh, plan to. Now, God has spoken. What is your response? Oh, God is going to make me rich and I'm going to be blessed and I'm going to run around all over this town and I'm doing my own thing. You can choose that. But God's result will never come to you. My focus this morning actually to share this message, God's way of doing things always make a person to prosper. God's way of doing things, always the, man, uh, uh, the person, whoever it is, he will be successful in everything, whatever they do. Because God never failed. He also never planned anything failure. That's God's plan. So it's our choice which way we are going to choose it. There are children, what they do, uh, they, want, they want guidance. Sometimes godly people, they give godly guidance. There are people who is worldly, they will give worldly guidance. It's up to you, as a child of God, as a righteous as a God, it is your responsibility to respond to the call. Amen? So, this morning, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You don't need to lack anything. It's already promised, added. There are some things to add now. For me, short, uh, uh, I think, uh, clothing, until I come to the normal size. I'm, I need some adding, right? And uh, <laughs> but very soon, yes. amen. But I'm trying to say, if I work according to God's way, God's way, He will answer the call. He will exactly. He will. Uh, Make, make you to choose. Choice is ours, but he will guide you. Right? Only thing the people of God are missing today, they never listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. When you miss that, you are going to miss everything. Because he is a loving father. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. Right? So, uh, it is actually, you have to practice, listen to his voice. Uh, early part of my life, young age, I had a very, very hard time to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Very. Because as soon as I go and sit in a place, to, I mean, to pray, or to meditate, or 
listen to voice of God, what happens? I, I get distracted in many ways. There will be sound somewhere, or maybe somebody calling, or somebody maybe is giving a call. You know, there are so many distractions that they are there, planned by Satan uh, in order to destroy you. There are many voices around us. All those voices are planned to destroy you and me. But if you listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, I'll guarantee success is the answer. Right? So with all the turmoil, what the problem may be, we have to choose to follow the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, I was talking to you, uh, I don't know how long ago, a few months ago. Uh, <laughs> so, seek, the Amplified Bible version says, but seek or aim at and strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness. Right? Uh, they say, if you want all the things to be added in your life, everything, whatever you needed, first thing, seek the kingdom. Now, when I say kingdom, kingdom is not a religion. Okay? Kingdom is not a religion. When I say kingdom, it is not some uh, ritual thing. Now, we may, we, uh, the Christianity, uh, instead of seeking kingdom, they started making a religion out of the kingdom and then going out to the religion. Everything, whatever they do, all religious act. There is no spiritual act. The Bible also says, uh, those who come to worship him, how to worship? Worship God in the spirit and in truth. No ritual. So if you start doing ritual, you are far away from the kingdom. If you treat it, Christianity as a religion, you are far away from the kingdom. Kingdom, when I say kingdom, it's actually uh, uh, basilia, the word, right? So many times, uh, yeah, yes, in the Greek language gives 923 times the word Basilia. And uh, so, even the uh, book of Genesis also starts there. Genesis 1.26, talking about the kingdom, the domain, rulership, kingship, something which already given to us in order to take control over anything. As a child of God, uh, you don't need to give up on anything. <laughs> yes. When we give up, God gives up. But as long as you hold on to the, I mean, the word, what the God has promised, God will back you up. Right? So here, uh, it's a, your choice. Now, doing God's way or man's way. You can choose. What we discussed earlier, I just want to remind you, we talk about a little bit on salvation. If you want to lead somebody to say salvation, or even if you want to get saved, right? There are two different ways. One is 
the traditional way. That's the right word. You can get saved uh, uh, the way what the church is teaching. Right? Confess your sin and you are saved. That's one way. But that's not the God's way. God's way says, confess the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. The Bible says, God's way for salvation, confess the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess the Lord Jesus. That is by, by Bible way. But the church, the tradition, put it the other way. Ah, confess your sin. You are saved. If Jesus has taken care of all of your sin, then why you want to confess sin? He paid the price. Right? So that's a man, man's way. Uh, can I, how, how do you say? Fingers crossed? Right? I don't know how many people will go to heaven according to uh, God is a judge. Whether you say uh, confess your sin or whether you confess the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever the way. I'm saying you can say. But actually, in God's way, he really sees anything apart from the word is not going to answer. You have to be very clear. Right? God is not obligated to save you if you go in a wrong way. Sometimes we used to say, ah, this, this is the way I got used to. Yeah, unless you repent and uh, turn, <laughs> I don't think God is going to answer. Many times what happens is, you pray to God, Lord, 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 Lord. You pray for years, still no answer. That's a, there was a preacher, he, 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 he says, first of all, if you have any need, go to God and pray. If you don't get the answer for your prayer, change your prayer. Same thing, repeating, repeating, after repeating, uh, you're not going to profit anything. It will become later on ritual. It is not kingdom, uh, kingdom way. But I'm trying to say here, it's a your choice, whether you want to do it man's way, or God's way, or your friend's way, or your relative's way, all up to a person, right? And uh, so God's way of doing things. Now, man always want to change. You see, uh, for an example, if you go to the Old Testament, God wants me to a king for the people of Israel. He, God himself, want to be a king to rule and reign uh, his creation. But people of Israel, they don't want. God's way he wants to sit in the throne and he wants to be magnified. He wants to be glorified. He wants to be worshipped by his people. Everything. And then he started blessing without any lack, without any wanting. He started blessing them. But in the meantime, some carnal mind got in and then they said, no, we want a man who can sit in the throne. They will be able to see 
then god gave okay your way you want a man to rule you oh here then god gave saul he messed up everything right then later on the people of god they suffered because of the arrogancy because of the wrong choice because of the uh, they choose the wrong way another thing we uh, discuss regarding giving right there is a way i covered that area uh, god's way of give, uh, giving man's way of give, uh, giving or uh, your choice are you going to stick to god's way or are you going to do your own way many people in our own congregation in the early part in their life when they came to the church they used to ask me many times they they used to ask me a pastor uh, now i am getting a big salary i i my income is bigger so uh, what shall i do with the tithes tithes is the tithes doesn't belongs to you it belongs to the lord right first of all so if you put your hand into god's uh, money you are in trouble according to the old testament uh, even for emergency if you take the tithes and use it oh next week i can go on and a week after i can give or something uh, bible say you have to give uh, 20% interest <laughs> on your giving yeah that's the way god handled things why is it like that tithes belongs to me if you borrow from me you have to pay interest that's the principle god was teaching there right but anyhow there are god has said simply plainly very clearly he has uh, given the instruction how to give your tithe right the many people you know uh, when they get the big money in the hand they think about all the poor uh, pastors in the city <laughs> yeah they think about ah uh, that pastor is going through be a bit hardship this pastor is going through a little bit uh, they are not getting proper income blah blah all those things come to the mind which mind it is it doesn't come to the spiritual mind it comes to the carnal mind why you are looking uh fleshly way whether the pastor is rich or poor <laughs> yeah that is not your business if i trust god if i come to uh, the ministry uh, i must be able to believe god for my provision so already prom- uh, promised seek ye first the kingdom of god and all these things shall be not taken away added all these things shall be added to you so my way of things oh this is big money i will divide and give no under the old covenant there was there was only one storehouse everybody has to bring everything there nothing uh, divided nothing uh, you know uh, that's the way old testament uh, they they practice everything but when it comes to uh, under the new covenant uh, you don't need to actually the best way of giving you must be led by the holy spirit tithing is a uh, baby stuff hello you give tithes because god has given you the principle the order principle how to do it i am not against for that but 
how much you love your God. Right? If I ask Rukshan, how much you love your wife? There's no limit. Am I right? Yeah. That, that's the way it should be when it comes to giving God and me. Now, under the, under the, you see, under the new covenant, we are under the new covenant. If we try to do everything Old Testament uh, way, you will be in trouble. Under the new covenant, everything is based in love. Love your God. Love your enemy. Hello? Love, you, love your neighbor. All, every action should be under the motivation of love. Even when it comes to prayer, every prayer, whatever you pray, what is your motivation? According to the book of uh, James, uh, James giving the principle, first of all he says, you are not asking, therefore you are not receiving. And then he says, you ask a miss. Right? So, and then when you read further, there he gives. Most of the time, people pray, the prayer is not answered because of the wrong motivation. But they, when they come to prayer, asking God, they will, they will pour the tears, right? All the stubble, the worries, everything, they dump it to God's hand. But the answer doesn't come. Why? The answer, whatever they are expecting, it is not based on God's way. Many prayers are not answered, not God's way. Uh, if you, I mean, we are doing our own way, therefore God cannot answer. Right? Then later on we blame God. Blaming God won't help. Right? God loves to help his children. God loves to show his mercy. But anyway, God is a loving God. He's a loving Father. He's a merciful God. All the good uh, character of God, if you read really, it, really, there, there are so many hours you can thank him. But God is not answering our prayer. Simple reason, we are not the things, we are not doing the way God, is, uh, God wants us to do. This morning I showed, anyway, turn with me to, you can go, to, turn with me to Leviticus. Leviticus 16, <clears throat> verse 29. This shall be a statute forever for you. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether a native of your own country or a stranger who dwells among you. Can you see that? This shall be a statue forever or, uh, for you. In the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether a native of your own country or a stranger who dwells among you. Verse 30 says, for on that day, the priest shall make atonement for you to cleanse you, that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. Actually, 
uh, when God gave, gave the command to the people, right? He says, uh, on the seventh month, right? He says, uh, it's, a, it's known as a day of atonement under the old covenant. So there, once a year, once a year, he make it as a, a, a day of atonement, which is you bring sacri uh, sacrifice uh, or sin offering, you can call it. And uh, so that particular day uh, separated or maybe uh, that particular day, the whole country will come before God. That day they will fast and pray. Right? On the day of atonement. God commanded the people of God to uh, fast. Right? Only one day, one day in a year. Once a year. Right? I'm just bringing a point here. Uh, how people will change. Now, when it comes, uh, God said here clearly, a seventh month, make a day on the tenth day, what? Day of atonement. You come before God without doing any work, right? Uh, so after this, uh, this uh, particular practice uh, carried out by the Jews, but when, the, when Jesus' time came, Jesus' uh, time, the disciples of John the Baptist, they're coming and complaining to Jesus. If you go to the Gospels, it says, what are they complaining? They are, they are saying, we are fasting. Right? I'm, uh, no, no. Yeah. The disciples of John the Baptist, they came, they said, uh, they complained to Jesus, we are fasting twice a week. Your disciples, they are not fasting. So Jesus said, when the bridegroom is there, uh, they don't need to. There will be day, the bridegroom will be taken away, and then they will fast. That's the answer you gave. But uh, the, uh, my point is here, God gave under the old covenant, in the book of Leviticus, what we read, once a year you fast and repent for all of your sin. Right? You repent. Bring a sin offering. Right? That day you separate, you work, yeah, uh, you don't work that day. Right? Rest and then confess your sin for that particular day. But as I said, when the time of Jesus, they made it twice a week. Can you see, see the change? God wants you to do once. People made it to, uh, twice a week. God made you bring a sin offering once a year. Only one day. But the disciples are saying, we are fasting twice a week. Can you see? You can fast even uh, twice or ten times, so no problem at all. You can do uh, how many times, whatever the way. But is it God's way? That is my question. Right? If you, if you do anything, according to man's way, the man's result will be there. But if you do everything, whatever God say, God's way of doing things, then the result will be different. Under the new covenant, under the New Testament, everything based in love. 
Yeah. Everything based in love. So, what is our choice? What is our choice? If you choose God's way, He will be pleased. Then the answer, result, whatever they, He is planning to give you, it's already added. People don't realize they make it as a religion or ritual uh, when it comes to kingdom of God. Okay, a couple of more things. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Mark chapter 9, verse 20. Then they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus okay. said to him. Okay. You know the story. Uh, this uh, father who brought the son to Jesus, he, uh, first of all, the father is coming in completing to Jesus regarding the disciples. My son is sick. I brought to uh, your disciples and they couldn't heal him. Then Jesus uh, called the boy, uh, I mean, uh, called the uh, father and the boy. So there we, we know uh, he prayed for uh, that chi uh, child really got healed. Okay. Now, uh, that uh, incident uh, finished. So the disciples, they are very curious. They want to know why they couldn't cast out the devil from the uh, boy. Right? Slowly coming and asking Jesus, uh, Lord, why we couldn't cast out the devil? Jesus immediately gave the answer because of there's no faith. That is the answer, right? Maybe even uh, same story shared in Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 and 21. You see? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, mm. if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Mm. And nothing will be impossible for you. Okay. You see, now, uh, however, this kind of uh, does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Now, before that, uh, he said, First, uh, uh, when the child got uh, cured, they were asking, the disciples were asking, why we couldn't uh, cast out the devil? Jesus said immediately, because of your unbelief. Right? That was the reason. Even in my ministry, I have seen, sometimes when you cast out the devil, immediately, then and there, uh, it seems to be like... Uh, not gone. But the word whatever we have spoken, the command whatever we gave to the devil, they will never forget. Yeah. Right? By faith, if you start uh, speaking the word, devil has to go. Otherwise, he's not obeying the word. So now the church, what the church has done, taken the 
uh, message. And here, especially when it comes to Sri Lanka, we know many people got hold of fasting. Oh, this type of uh, devil, this type of devil. I'll tell you, during Jesus was on the earth, okay, there may be different, different kind of devil playing pool with uh, everyone, right? But under the new covenant, there is no category. There's no, uh, what do you call, rank. This level, that level, right? Malayala devil. What I'm trying to say, now we label, we put label, ah, this is a big one, this is a dangerous area, that one, this one, all the nonsense uh, uh, done by the people of God today. But under the new covenant, after the crucifixion, devil himself, no evil spirit, I'm not talking about evil spirit, devil himself was defeated. Right? So you don't need to... Uh, Satan is a liar and also is very cunning. He knows how to cheat people. You know, we'll say, now, if I say, uh, you got Malayala devil, right? Uh, the next day, devil will come and tell you, uh, he has, she has an Indonesian devil. Yeah. Our pastor, they go behind. Oh, Indonesian devil, Indonesian devil. Indonesian. Come. Five people can't cast out the devil because of Indonesia. Then ten people gather. They make it as a big show. But whether the Malayala devil or Indonesian devil or whatever devil, devil is devil. It's already defeated. Only thing, if you come on, it has to go. If it is not going, unbelief is ruling there. If you have faith in the Lord and in his word, there nothing can stop you. Right? So, his way of doing things. Now, you can get the... I, I can remember one lady got a demon possessed. Uh, immediately, the pastor... Jump in the front and uh, say, "Come, come, 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 come." Uh, uh, in Sinhala, they call it "dangwel nyaya, dangwel uh, yatna," right? Chain, chain prayer. You chain prayer. All the believers, most of them unbelievers, okay, holding the hand right around that lady, and they they say, "Palyang, yesugele, yesugele." All those things are they are shouting and screaming and uh, that uh, that devil is dancing for their uh, tune, their music. The devil, yeah, demon for the person dancing for their music. Now that is the way of we do sometimes, right? But I'll tell you, if you want be a Bible way, what does it say? They cast out the devil. That's what Jesus said. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Right? So. Everything, you don't need to actually waste time. Especially when it comes to casting devil, you don't need to. Just uh, give a word, the devil will flee. Okay? So now, I'm gone out of time also. Always remember, if you want God's result in your life, do, learn to do everything God's way. Anything. First, uh, first question must be come to your mind. What is the uh, God? What do you? Uh, what God wants me to do in this place? He will guide you. He will. Uh, so uh, once when you do that way, sometimes it may be hard. Sometimes it may be uh, slow. But be obedient, and if you start doing. Result will come. Because God is not a liar. 
he will make it possible because bible say all things are possible to them that believe it if you have faith in the son of god if you have faith in the word of god if you have faith uh, on the kingdom kingdom principle will work it may be sometime far away when i say far away it may be it might take little longer time but definitely will come for example we say confess in the word of god one of the best example confess in the word of god is may uh, yeah confess in the word of god may be slow the answer may be getting slow but surely come surely come why the word of god never when it go south never return avoid it will accomplish the purposes and then come to us you know the last test uh the last test when i went uh what is the this is they say the bones and marrow huh my platelet count was going down and down down and down and uh, uh something to do with uh, uh, bones and marrow right blood issue so the specialist uh, checked uh, i mean uh, that's the time you got the word uh, that verse bible right hebrew chapter 4 uh, verse 12 and uh, so she was uh, okay anyhow uh ponia preached this is so she came with uh, the thing you know she was teasing me with the bible verse seriously she was teasing me here after when you open your mouth this is the scripture you have to go <clears throat> and seriously we took it and by the grace of god actually when we went to the specialist he says uh, i am not going to do any treatment this is automatically covering up everything yeah never expected otherwise they had to take me to the theater and do another mess right i have gone enough theater cinema theater as well as uh, this theater also <laughs> yeah and uh, so word of god will never fail you right so i'm i never actually for a long time i didn't speak like a longer time just yes no that's a, that's all uh, even i didn't speak i mean speak to the people over the phone my phone was shut down for months right but by the grace of god today i'm preaching and uh, so only one thing i notice if you do anything according to god's way adding is the answer adding is the answer right <clears throat> 